The introduction of resource to Angular has changed how we can go about building Angular applications. Specifically, it brought the realm of asynchronous reactivity to signals, which was otherwise an area quite neatly dominated by observables. I've been experimenting a lot with both toy and demo code as well as production apps, and as someone who is an avid observables enjoyer, I've been surprised by how much observable usage I've been able to migrate using resource. Not just because I can, but because sometimes it is just the more natural and ergonomic feeling solution. But we can make resource even more powerful and easy to use. Just like how Angular provides us with HTTP resource, which is essentially a specialized version of a standard resource for HTTP requests, we can make our own little or big utilities or extensions of the base resource implementation. I'm going to show some resource utilities I've created for various things and projects I'm working on. Some of these might seem a bit obvious, like of course you can abstract things, but I think they are pretty cool. We'll start with an approach that's pretty broadly useful. For this specific example, I'm using Ionic Storage, which the Ionic library provides, which is a way to interact with storage mechanisms. We might set up Ionic Storage like this. We first have to inject storage, and then to get a reference to the storage object, we need to call its create method, which is asynchronous. Once that resource is available, we then also need to make an additional call to define driver on it in order to set up the appropriate storage mechanism. So first of all, we can abstract this nicely into a create storage method that looks like this. And now we can easily set up storage with a simple one-liner. But still, accessing things from storage is still kind of awkward because there is a bit of boilerplate involved in creating the resource like this. So again, we can set up a little helper utility. Now anytime we want a value from storage, we can just use it like this. The next one gets a little more niche. I'm working on an app where we report error codes to the user so that if they contact support with some issue, we are more easily able to track down the cause of the issue. It's not a perfect solution, and it feels like a sentry sponsor spot could be dropped right here, but it is what it is. So basically we have a global error handler that does some stuff. I can't show the actual code, but the basic idea is that with the global error handler, if a resource signal that is in an error state is accessed, it will be handled by the error handler. This isn't exactly what we wanted. We don't really care about showing the actual error, we just want to show the user some code that makes sense to us. So I created this utility. This utility is basically just a wrapper for creating a normal resource, but it also automatically sets up an effect so that when the resource is in an error state, it will throw whatever error code we provide to it. This allows us to use it like this, and then we can just display this user-friendly error code to the user. The last example is even more niche, and as it turned out, I found a way to avoid having to use this approach at all, but I still think it's interesting and may have potential uses in other scenarios. Basically, I wanted to be able to execute some code that depends on a resource, but I wanted to be able to avoid any timing issues with the resource having finished loading yet or not. So I created this run after resolved utility, which accepts a function that will only be executed if the status of the resource is resolved, and if it is not currently resolved, it will execute the code when the status changes to resolved. It will also make sure to only execute the code once. This then would allow me to use it like this without having to worry about whether storage is currently resolved yet or not. As I mentioned, I was able to restructure the code anyway to avoid needing to have something like this in the end, but I still think it's potentially useful. So that's just a few things I've been trying out recently. Uh, feel free to drop a comment with any thoughts or if you have your own utilities or abstractions you've been using with resources. And if you liked the video, please consider dropping a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you here again for the next video.